and it is four o'clock. So Mayor Allen, when you are ready, we can start the meeting. Thank you. All right, can I have a move or a second to call the meeting to order, please? Councilor Cabral, Councilor Moore, that the special meeting of the Council Township of Springwater of May 4, 2022, come to order at 4.01 p.m. All those in favor? That is carried. Due to COVID, we continue to take the steps to limit in-person meetings and conduct the council meetings with council and staff uh, virtually. Um, you can watch the meeting live on the township's website at www.springwater.ca, or you can um, visit the webpage and watch the video on the township's YouTube channel after the meeting. Are there any disclosure pecuniary interest council? All right, now please to call upon Mr. John Noss, uh, partner of Blackline Consulting to present the IT master plan. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Just making sure I can get my technology working now. Uh, thank you very much. I've got a presentation that I will share and walk through. All right, hopefully everyone can see the presentation that I have. Yes, can, thank you. Great. Um, in terms of agenda today, we'll, uh, I'll briefly take you through the approach that we took, uh, the IT master plan on page, uh, the importance of some of the systems that you have, and, uh, and also the importance of systems going forward, future role of IT, the proposed initiatives, uh, the roadmap to get there, and what you can expect in terms of future value from um, uh, implementing the IT master plan. Okay, so we'll let you make the presentation, then we'll have uh, questions after you finish the uh, presentation. Perfect. Thank How you. do you pronounce your last name, John? Nos. Nos. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, our approach, uh, we do quite a bit of work with other municipalities uh, in developing IT master plans. Uh, we use a four-phase approach, as you can see there, starting with discovery, per, uh, per, performing analysis, developing some insight around the recommendations on what we think that you should be uh, doing going forward, and then docu documenting that into a final report. Um, our approach is by design highly collaborative. It starts off understanding more about the context of the municipality, um, what uh, your needs are from a resident perspective uh, and from a staff perspective, and then getting into the technology components of it. Um, the IT master plan on a page, uh, this summarizes both the vision, some of the priorities and the proposed initiatives. Um, so as you can see, we were able to, to work with the, uh, the municipality to come up with a um, uh, a vision statement, uh, which is enabling the township to deliver efficient customer centric services. There's three priorities that were distilled based on the, the initiatives and the current state. Uh, and the first one is around digital services, uh, which again, COVID has been a bit of an accelerator to move uh, many municipalities uh, to, to provide uh, greater services online uh, or robust services online. Um, IT governance is also uh, an important priority uh, as the township adopts more technology and uses it. Uh, we need to look at how we make decisions, uh, involvement of IT, uh, and so on. And finally, system integration and enhancing the systems. Your staff use technology today, they rely on those systems, uh, and the flow of information between one system to another can be greatly beneficial to eliminate manual steps uh, and time consuming activities. We've identified 11 uh, initiatives, and I will I'll go through each one of them, but I'm going to pause there. Uh, I won't go through each one right now. I'll, I'll go through that shortly. But one of the key things uh, uh, for this strategy um, is that, uh, the, as I mentioned, the, the system enhancement and system integration. You have a, a set of systems today. Um, as you can see, there's a, a, a list of some of the key systems that you have. Uh, which is which is great, but one of the challenges that you have is one. There's a few gaps uh, with some of the systems uh, that that you you uh, that you're working with today. Uh, I know citywide is one example where there's some uh, enhancements that are being performed, um, as well as integration. There's not a whole lot of integration between the systems. So even though you have staff using the right systems, um, moving from one system to another can cause uh, some manual activity. And as the the township continues to grow, one of the best ways of making sure that you can ensure efficient growth is 
by reducing some of those manual activities. In terms of the future role of IT, IT and, and technology is constantly changing. We need to make sure that we've got a clear description of the roles and responsibility of IT, as well as the other departments. And so for, for, for me, when we do these types of reviews, I like to make sure it's, it's clear in terms of what the role of IT will be responsible for. And one of the, the key points that we have is around um, IT should be involved in, in leading some of the decision-making around the type of hardware uh, and software that the township adopts to make sure that one, it complies with security practices and standards, but also it fits within the knowledge and capabilities of the IT department itself. So that you're not picking things that maybe uh, the IT department needs to, doesn't have necessarily knowledge or capabilities. The second is that IT's role is, is not to, to own the, the optimizing of, of business processes. That's the department's responsibility. Uh, but IT can play a leading role to really help uh, provide opportunities for the departments and help them with their optimization. Um, the next one, continue to, to keep technology up to date. Uh, always a responsibility for IT, and this is just a, a, you know reconfirming that that is firmly the the responsibility of IT. And lastly, that IT is also a steward of data across the township, making sure it's secure, available, and that the performance is there to make sure that it can enable all the staff and departments to deliver the services that they're responsible for. The next few phase, phases, uh, pages, I will I'll walk through the proposed initiatives, four, phase, uh, four pages in total. Um, the first, starting with what we call develop a target systems and data architecture. And as I alluded to earlier, you have many systems in place today uh, that are appropriate systems. And now it's about making sure that we can build the integration between the systems uh, so that we can optimize uh, the, the way that staff work. And the first thing is about creating a blueprint, as you can imagine, um, uh, building a house or, or renovations, you have a blueprint, you have a design, uh, and then from there you're able to uh, update it and add the things that you want or remove the things. So similar to this, it's creating that blueprint uh, and then looking at the data, the, the information that exists in one system and another, and seeing where there might be opportunities for improving that flow and then developing a plan around addressing some of those integration aspects. Um, the benefit is uh, the intent of the benefit is to reduce some of that manual effort for staff. The second one is formally include IT in the procurement process. You have a, a bylaw for procurement. However, what we're suggesting is that um, IT typically has a uh, procurement guidelines. It's a little bit more detailed. And it covers things like technical standards, uh, and that could be the type of software that you use, uh, whether you're a Microsoft or Oracle uh, type of organization. Uh, it may also talk about some of the requirements around um, security, uh, whether it's in the cloud or on premise. So there's a bunch of technical kind of guidelines that you can include, you can create uh, and include in, in RFPs when you go to market, uh, but then also making, uh, making sure that you've got standards that IT can operate from. This will be helpful to, to one, improve the, the planning and resource management from an IT perspective so that they also know when, when they'll get involved uh, and also that uh, they won't necessarily have to undo any type of work that maybe um, uh, a department's gone out to, to market and the standards don't quite line up. It also ensure, it helps ensure the consistency of the technology that you adopt going forward. The next is create a, a cloud first policy. Um, for those of you that don't know what cloud is, it's um, a, a kind of a, a short definition is where the, the hardware, the servers, instead of having it uh, within your office, um, it's in the it's in a, a data center. Uh, it's in a, a third party organization. Um, typically, uh, the the cloud provider would be in Canada, so that it, it complies with data residency rules, but not necessarily. Um, what we're suggesting here is that while the the the, the township has been um, actively moving things to the cloud, um, creating some guidelines around when we should and when we shouldn't. Uh, what are some of those factors? And typically, it's around privacy, security, uh, financials. Um, so that you do have a, a, a guidelines to, to make sure that you are consistently uh, making a, a, the right decision. The second is then looking at what you still have left, which isn't in the cloud, and creating a migration plan. Uh, and in some cases uh, uh, that you may not be aware of, but uh, many of the vendors are moving to a cloud-only option. So in the future, you won't necessarily have an option. So you almost need to start preparing for that uh, so that it doesn't happen to you. 
And some of the benefits you can expect from this is improved resiliency. So making sure available syst systems are, are more available and robust. It also will help reduce some of the capital costs and shift that to operating expense. Uh, and then additionally, from an IT support, uh, in some cases, it helps to, to reduce that as well. Number four, formalized IT governance. Um, uh, the importance of IT is, is increasing. Uh, and I think all departments are quite reliant on it, especially during COVID. Um, and what we're suggesting is that there's a, a regular uh, cadence uh, with IT, meeting with the different departments, understanding what their needs are, what their priorities are, uh, could be um, escalating certain uh, incidents or tickets and things that IT is working on, uh, but also um, having IT involved in leadership meetings so that they're able to present and, the, and show the, the leadership team what IT is working on. Uh, this will help improve planning as well as alignment between IT, the other departments and the leadership. Create an IT literacy program. Um, as you can imagine, uh, the, the township has a varied workforce, uh, different uh, lines of business, different type of businesses. Um, and along with that, you also have different staff. Some are very adept at using technology and systems and can learn it quite easily. And others, it's a little bit more challenging. Um, and as there's more dependence on technology for the different departments, we need to make sure that we've got a good understanding of you know, where our staff are in terms of their ability to use the systems that we have, the information and technology, create uh, 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 plans uh, and learning um, uh, articles uh, and a program for them to, to make sure that they are getting the most out of uh, the, the systems and they're able to keep up. The benefit here, and in, in many cases, we find that you may have the right systems, but may not have all the, the right training for staff. So the big benefit here is making sure that you've got effective use of the technology investments that you've made, but then also a better awareness of security. Number six is, is meant to help uh, improve uh, IT's ability to deliver service and also uh, reduce some of the, the manual activities that, that IT undertakes. Um, and what we're suggesting is implementing an IT service management tool. The service management tool very simply is, uh, uh, does a number of things, everything from tracking incidents and work orders, uh, it can also help with asset management. Uh, it can help with some uh, automate some tasks and such as pushing out um, uh, software updates and so on. So some of those activities that today are done manually, uh, what we're suggesting is to is to to select a, a tool, revise the IT processes, and then be able to start reporting against it. Along with that, what we've suggested is uh, that IT undertakes ITIL training, which ITIL is a information technology infrastructure library. It's a common practice that's been in place for about 20 some odd years, maybe even longer. Um, I know when I started my career, uh, it was it was quite um, uh, prevalent. Basically, it provides a, a framework and structure around um, IT processes, um, how to do them, uh, what to do and when. Um, the, the benefit here is around automating some of IT's activities so that they get a bit uh, uh, more capacity to, to refocus their effort in other areas and improve service delivery through consistency. Number seven is creating an uh, asset refresh uh, policy for, for IT assets. Um, uh, this will help ensure that you know, uh, the IT department has um, asset information, much more granular level of asset information. Uh, so they're able to track it, they're able to attach it to work orders and make sure that they can flag maybe where some, some uh, hardware may be underperforming and needs replacement, um, as well as just in terms of uh, good practice around refresh, making sure that we've, you know, stay compliant with, uh, uh, with the, the assets and making sure that they're not getting too aged. Uh, aged assets can cause uh, more work, uh, more break fix. So improved effectiveness uh, is the benefit as well as a more predictable expense. Number eight is consider outsourcing security services. Um, security is a, you know, continued threat. Uh, cybersecurity uh, is quite difficult to keep up, especially when you're a small department. Um, and one of the things that we suggest is that there are firms that do this uh, only this, uh, that's their expertise, and they're able to provide this service for you. Uh, so we're suggesting creating an RFP, go to market, create a business case based on what you find out, um, and then implement the preferred option. And the, the benefit is improved resiliency for the, the township. Number nine is, is, uh, is uh, 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 somewhat uh, related to number eight, which is create a, a cyber review schedule. Um, so not just the security services, but also cyber readiness, making sure that you've got a plan that you can uh, 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 manage any kind of cyber event uh, and, and respond to it. Similar to disaster recovery or emergency, 
uh, plans uh, that you know uh, municipalities undertake and, and, and test annually. This is a similar one. It's just focused much more on cyber readiness. Last page on the proposed initiatives, uh, run a, a data warehouse proof of concept. Uh, data analytics is gonna be increasingly important over the coming years. You've got the systems. Once you work out the integration, then you'd be able to, to really start turning, uh, pulling that data out and be able to do uh, uh, reporting and analytics. Uh, what we're suggesting is to go to market, evaluate some of the options, uh, work with a vendor to perform a, a pilot, and then do cost-benefit analysis if that if it uh, uh, provides the the value that you foresee. Um, this will help in terms of uh, 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 enabling the uh, organization to be more data-driven on its decision making, um, increase efficiency, in, increase efficiencies as it relates to uh, some of the manual reporting that happens today. Number 11, the last one, which is uh, robotics process automation. Um, effectively, what this is, is it's a method for which you can um, uh, automate uh, repetitive activities. It's using software that it can have some intelligence to perform these activities. Um, and some of the common processes that it can help automate are accounts payable, you know, something that happens quite often um, and it's, it's quite repeatable. Um, and what we're suggesting here is to select a, a platform, a uh, robotics uh, process automation platform, uh, perform a proof of concept against some of the, the target processes that the municipality has, and then roll it out. It's a low cost way of, of innovating some of your processes. Uh, it's also a low cost method that may be uh, a better solution than integrating some of your systems. In some cases it might be too costly. This could be a good alternative for you. So those are the 11 uh, recommendations that we've suggested. As you can see with the, the five-year roadmap, it is front-loaded. Um, many of these, some of these activities are already underway um, uh, that we've spoken with the, the CAO and with IT. Um, so they've been working on some of these already uh, because uh, for example, formalizing IT governance uh, is a good example and number six as well. Uh, so some of these are in flight and things that, that you should continue on with. Uh, uh, but as you can see, it's front loaded uh, and then uh, the, the latter few are pushed out. Um, uh, the one of the things in terms of dependencies, number one is quite important for some of the other uh, initiatives. So it is an important kind of um, uh, activity to perform uh, early on. And lastly, in terms of future value, what, what will you get as you, as you implement the IT master plan? There's a number of, of things that we see around improving the resiliency and security uh, of, the, of the township, improving customer service, uh, improving productivity, as well as providing uh, greater data and analytics and insight for the municipality. So that's the presentation for today. I'll stop there and open it up for questions. Thank you, Mr. Noss. Good, uh, good summary, lots of information there. Before we get into questions and discussions, I do want to extend a thanks to Aaron DeVried and Michael Burney, two hardworking staff members for leading the IT Master Plan Initiative and working with Blackline. So thank you both for, uh, for making that happen. So I'll open it up to questions, comments, Council. Councillor Cabral. Oh, thank you, uh, Mayor Allen. Um, maybe it's possible to remove the presentation so I can see everyone once again. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I, uh, I like the idea of um, uh, the IT department, uh, not necessarily uh, going out to vendors all the time. I think maybe it'd be worth exploring whether or not the IT department, since uh, the demands on it are only gonna be greater that uh, maybe coming down the road, uh, we should look at maybe um, an additional staff member in that particular department because a lot of the um, technology that's coming down is going to put greater demands on them. Um, I, I, I do know that I think for municipalities, um, our, our sensitivity to um, keeping our, our documents in house, I think that is something that uh, we need to really consider before we uh, move stuff to the cloud. Uh, only reason being is uh, unlike um, unlike uh, manufacturers and other businesses, uh, there are certain pieces of legislation 
that a municipality has to uh, follow freedom of information, that sort of thing that I think places a much broader um, sense of responsibility on a municipality. And I think that's maybe one of the reasons why a lot of municipalities don't necessarily keep their sensitive data on a cloud. Uh, I think the other aspect too on, on that particular one would also be that uh, whenever you engage a vendor or uh, license, um, I think you also have a lot of conditions and stipulations that have to be met. So I like the idea of um, uh, IT uh, basically being at the leadership table because um, they need to be there to hear what's being said and and also enable them to kind of provide the direction for the IT department to follow to achieve the goals that um, township itself wants. So overall, a lot of great stuff and I do appreciate it and it does build one thing on the other. But uh, as I say, I think uh, making the cloud necessarily a priority, I think that would be something that would be have to look at very critically to see whether or not that's something um, that should move forward, just given that most municipalities do not do that. And uh, there's gotta be a, a very valid reason why they, why they do. Um, so those are just a few comments, but thank you very much for the presentation. I found it very informative. Thank you. Mr. Noss, any comments with respect to those points? No, I, 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 through your worship, I, the only comment just on the cloud is it, it, the uh, we are seeing a, a lot more activity with municipalities moving to to the cloud. Um, so that that is uh, that's definitely something that 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 is happening. Uh, but uh, but and you know having a good plan around it is is key. Yeah. So that's why. Yeah. Yeah. Councillor Ritchie. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Allen. Actually, I'm tech. This new technology is just. Uh, it, it just, it's just, everything's such a moving target today, but um, our IT coordinator, Mike Burney, uh, I'd like to hear from him and what his comments are on that, because uh, Mike leads us every day, does a, just an amazing job. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'd be curious to know what Mike's thinking. Please enlighten us. Okay, uh, Michael. Thank you, Mayor Allen, and uh, through Council. I uh, certainly appreciate the comments. Uh, I'd, I'd like to hear positive feedback, so that's great. Um, but uh, certainly with, uh, you know, uh, I've worked closely with John over the past few months, and a lot of his recommendations I, I would agree with. He's he's put a lot of thought into them. Um, you know, we discussed them in great length, certainly some of the concerns Councillor Cabral was talking about. Uh, definitely worth considering. Um, if it's about security and stuff like that, I would actually, I would almost hazard a guess that uh, it would almost be more secure in the cloud because then we aren't exposing our internal environment to uh, to any sort of hackers and stuff like that. Once we start putting stuff in the cloud, we'll make sure it's secured with, uh, with extra securities like multi-factor authentication, if you're familiar with that. But basically, you know, it's like those those extra codes that you get when you got to log into your email, uh, things like that, just to ensure that all of our documents and everything like that is secure. Um, but certainly all of John's recommendations, you know, we've, like I said, we discussed them in length. Um, I, I think there are a lot of great uh, opportunities there. You know, John's been in the field uh, for a long time. I certainly respect his, his opinions there. So, um, and even a lot of the recommended recommendations he had, yeah, I've certainly, uh, I, I've had the same thought uh, even prior to uh, going through this process, but, you know, there's there's certainly a few there like the cloud first policy, and uh, and you know the robotic pro process automation and the policies that uh, align with that. Um, those are those are all great insights, and I I certainly uh, respect John's uh, input on uh, on all these things. It. Okay, thank you. Any follow on, Councillor Ritchie? No, I uh, thank you, Mayor Allen. Uh, I I just it, it that gives gives me some comfort as a counselor that uh, we're moving forward and uh, we're, hopefully we're, we're going in the right direction. So thank you. Okay, other comments? Councillor Cabral. Thank you once again, Mayor Allen. Um, just uh, touching on um, what's being proposed uh, down the road for a, a lot of remote, we all have already been doing that. And I was wondering um, uh, from uh, Mr. Noss and also um, um, Coordinator Bernie, 
uh, with respect to uh, physical tokens for accessing uh, remotely um, our, our, our servers, whether they be on the, in the cloud or whether they be uh, housed in the house, um, uh, is that something that's taking place now? I mean, obviously for, for us, it's not because um, I don't have a physical token, but I'm wondering about that going forward. I know it's a big thing for security for people who are, are working remotely, and it also prevents, uh, I guess, um, data being breached should that particular laptop or that piece of equipment actually fall into the wrong hands because without the token, uh, there is no access. So maybe you could just bring bring council up to speed on that, whether or not that's something we're looking at as well. Coordinator Bernie, I'll let you uh, take that first. Thank you, Marilyn, and through you to Councillor Cabral. Uh, absolutely. So I, without going into too many details, obviously, you know, security being a you know, sensitive topic, uh, we do have hardware tokens in place. Uh, we are rolling it out currently um, and it will be an initiative uh, with the new um, with the new council going forward as well. But currently, yes, most most staff are using uh, are using that sort of uh, system. OK, uh, other comments, Councillor Ma Chapman. Thank you, Mara Allen. I'm just wondering what the next step is after this. Will you go through each of the top um, the, where you said it was um, heavy at the first first year? Would you go through those first? So I just want to know what the next steps are. Uh, Mr. Noss. Yeah, through your worship, um, the the plan that we've laid out, uh, we've we've worked with with um, uh, with Michael uh, to to kind of work through the timeline. Uh, so. From my perspective, you've got the plan, uh, and it's a matter of you know being able to execute it. Um, so I would suggest that you you know you undertake it in the order that we've that we've put together um, uh, in terms of the you know the the year. So I wouldn't necessarily say um, you know start number one right away. You can start all the you know all the the ones for for year one uh, at the same time or some of them. Uh, that Michael, we did speak about, and I said whichever makes sense to you. Uh, that's that's kind of leeway because there may be other things that happen throughout the year um, that I, I don't have awareness about. So you need a bit of flexibility. So that's why that's why when we build these plans, it's usually kind of you know the five years rather than being more specific than that because uh, uh, IT and, and 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 you know the changing business world, uh, you need a bit of flexibility. So so we did discuss it, and, and I think. You know, uh, Michael's very capable. He's going to be able to to move things forward. Michael, your thoughts on that? Thank you, Marilyn. Uh, I, yeah, absolutely. The first year, you know, there's a lot there, but I I think that they're they're definitely achievable. Um, you know, I uh, I think I, you know some of the policy making and stuff like that. There are frameworks out there that we we can adopt. And again, you know, going through ITIL training and stuff like that that John had mentioned uh, will certainly help in that regard. Um, and Certainly, like we're we're looking to sort of jump the gun, so to speak, and and get started on uh, on some of those initiatives for 2022 as well, because you know some of them are needed uh, sooner rather than later with with the uh, growing municipality. So, um, so you can almost think of the the 2023 year as a 2022 slash 2023 in a way, because you know we still got a fair amount of time this year. Okay. All right, if there are no more comments, we'll go to the next uh, portion of this. Uh, Could I have a mover and seconder to enter into the close, close session, please? Councillor Moore, uh, Deputy Mayor Coughlin, that in accordance with Section 239 of the Municipal Act 2001, Corporation of Township of Springwater does hereby resolve to move into closed session at 4.30 p.m. for discussion pertaining to the security of the property of the municipality or local board, a personal matter about an identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees, labor relations or employee negotiations. And the topic is IT operating model, the confidential recommendations. All those in favor? That is carried. Okay. Um, so uh, let's start then by discussing uh, item four. Recommendation for uh, Mr. Mr. Noss, did you have anything further to say about the GS, GIS technician? I know Councillor Gabriel had a point that he wants to make and discuss. No, not at all. And, and just for, for, for open purposes, um, you know, one of the suggestions we had was to, to hire a GIS person. 
uh, there's growing need for GIS services, both internally and externally. Uh, so it is, is a gap. Um, it can be quite uh, um, uh, uh, important uh, for the municipality going forward. Uh, and, and we suggest that, you know, hire it should be part of uh, the IT department uh, because it will be more of a centralized service for now. So that's the, uh, just to, to present it uh, in open. Uh, that's, okay, uh, Bef that's before sure. going to Councilor Gabral, um, Michael, you had some thoughts with respect to this and uh, also the consideration of cost recovery. I believe you and I had talked about that. Uh, thank you, Mayor Allen. Yes, uh, yeah, we had a brief discussion about that um, internally and I know uh, CEO Schmidt and I also discussed it. Um, and uh and again it and with john i should say um so one of the one of the struggles that we're having right now is that many of the departments be it finance planning building they're all very heavily relying on gis systems right now uh citywide city view you know for those softwares they're they're all integrated into gis and one of the issues that we're having right now, again, is that the county's uh, service, uh, their service level right now maybe isn't adequate for us simply because they're they're probably understaffed on their end too. And they're having a hard time keeping up with uh, with the rest of the, the other municip the partner municipalities requests as well. So um, what I would say is that if we had a GIS technician or coordinator, depending on uh, what we end up going for, um, it would be someone who could be that sort of intermediary with the county's GIS department and to be able to develop applications and integrations in-house layers and stuff like that on the maps uh, that we can then send to the county servers. And, um, and then that way we don't necessarily have to involve the county, except they're just ho they're the host environment for, you know, all of the data. And then, you know, things like, uh, public layers, you know, um, one example would be on the county's GIS uh, map right now, they have garbage collection dates, you know, that that's, that's one particular piece of data that's handy to the residents when they log into that map. Um, being, being able to feed in specific township data to those maps directly from our environment would be a huge benefit. And I don't unfortunately have the GIS expertise to be able to facilitate that right now. Um, we have used internal staff from public works and planning to develop these layers, but they aren't GIS technicians. They're, you know, they have some training in that, but uh, it's not the level that we need. And certainly they're, they're pulled doing other things. They're, they're swamped enough. So having a dedicated resource for, to develop those, uh, those layers, those maps and applications would be a huge benefit to the township. Um, and at, at, with regards to, um, uh, you know, finding, finding the money for it, so to speak, <laughs> lost her words right now, um, would be to hopefully, uh, you know, through application fees, pay for that position. So, uh, you know, through uh, building permit fees, planning application fees, you know, certainly our planning and building departments are both swamped right now. Um, and uh, and if, if we had more you know, logical tools and, and mapping tools where, you know, someone could click on a, a property and be able to see everything about their own property. Uh, that, that would be a huge benefit and potentially reduce the number of calls that we get into customer service and, and you know, a lot of the back and forth with uh, some of our more senior members. And, uh, and certainly it would be a boon to, to staff as well internally, you know, being ha able to see all of that information on a map at a glance uh, without having to log into separate systems and stuff like that. And again, I, I believe all of this is achievable with the county's tools. Um, again, hopefully, uh, from my understanding, those those tools should be adequate um, going forward. You know, um, we've been using them for years now, and uh, they've been solid, uh, provided we have the the avenue to to get our information on the county's mapping. Um, then the only cost to us would be staff time uh, for that GIS technician. So, yeah, we I don't think we would necessarily need uh, much else in terms of uh, uh, in terms of project fees and stuff like that, unless there were more integrations to be made. Councilor Cabral. 
Thank you, Marilyn. I, I, I think I get the gist that this wouldn't just be for internal, just from what uh, coordinator Bernie said. I think it would also provide a portal for the public as well to access information. So he's answered it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ma Chapman. Thank you, Mary Allen, and thank you for the presentation. And thank you, Coordinator Bernie, for your expertise and knowledge. So it sounds like with what um, Coordinator Bernie is saying with the GIS, that this could be a, probably a top priority. And if so, where do we go from here? Do we have a staff report on financial end of it? Or just, I'd just like to know that. Okay, well, um, uh, the motion that is uh, proposed in the agenda uh, talks to um, uh, receiving uh, what we have been provided today and then uh, approving the master plan and directing staff to report back to Council regarding its initiative 1 to 11 outlined in the IT master plan and recommendations 1 to 4. So it'd be a further reporting back to us about implementation is, is what I interpret. CEO Schmidt. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ryan, for you to uh, Councillor Mount Chapman. Uh, so Councillor Mount Chapman, uh, depending on Council's uh, uh, decision today, the idea would be is, is uh, you may have seen, or you would have seen, or you should have seen, uh, when we were talking about uh, some staffing requirements uh, late last year, uh, we did have a somewhat of a five-year plan and we did have a GIS technician slash kind of IT position in the next five years. Uh, after uh, completing this exercise, I think what you'll see, depending on council's consideration today, is uh, if council is supportive of that, you'll likely see a, a request come through the uh, 2023 budget uh, for a, a GIS technician. So, um, and or if council wants to see something prior to that, obviously we're in your hands as to, as to what you'd like to see. Okay. Um, then can I have a mover and seconder uh, for the motion at hand, please? Councillor Moore and Councillor Ma Chapman, that the presentation regarding the IT master plan presented by John Noss, Blackline Consulting, be received, and that Council hereby approve the IT master plan and that staff be directed to report back to Council regarding initiatives 1 to 11 outlined in the IT master plan. Uh, 2022 to 2027 report and recommendations one to four outlined in confidential report IT operating model. All those in favor? That is carried unanimously. Confirmatory bylaw mover and seconder, please. Uh, Councillor Cabral and Councillor Ritchie, then bylaw 2022 034 to confirm and adopt the proceedings of council special meeting held on May 4th, 2022, listed herein, be signed and sealed by the mayor and clerk. All those in favor? That is carried. And mover and second to adjourn this meeting, please. Councillor Ritchie, Councillor Moore, that the special meeting of the Township of Springwater does now adjourn at 5.10 p.m. to meet again in the regular meeting, May 4th, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. All those in favor? That is carried. Again, thank you, Mr. Noss, uh, for the report and good presentation. Bye thank you. Now. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you.